Welcome to Wassel Woodworking. On today's episode, I will be installing this wall mount network rack. I made this in part two of my network rack series. The link to that video and others will be available at the end of the video, as well as in the description below. This is a time-lapse video of the work that was required to remove my old network setup and install the new network rack. Enjoy. So this is just a time-lapse and I'm running it 20 times because it took quite a while to get this done. So on the other side of the wall there, I'm taking down all of the equipment that I had on that side, which uh, consists of a router, my UMA phone, a network switch. There's some PoE injectors on this side of the wall that you can see, um, but it's a mess. So I'm um, trying to undo all this, but at the same time, I'm uh, leaving the router hooked up to the ONT so that the house continues to have Wi-Fi for those that need it. And uh, with the family, you know someone needs Wi-Fi at every time of every day. So uh, just going through here, setting all that up, and then pulling all the cables back through the wall. So as I try to make a organ organized uh, bundle out of all these network cables, I'm using Velcro zip ties, and I'm putting them together as I comb through the Ethernet cables to try to get them a little bit more organized so later on they can be uh, tied into the punch panel. So at this point I have removed everything from the inside, bundled the cables, and on this side here I've removed everything except for the ONT, which is temporarily running the router from AT&T and it has uh, got some Wi-Fi going just to keep the family afloat during this tragic and terrible time of no internet access or limited access I should say. So now it's time to cut the hole on this side. So I'm holding it up there for a second just to check the size and make sure I uh, it's going to place in the right spot. And then on the back side knowing there's a couple of obstacles including the ONT on this side I measure it all out with level and uh, get it marked on there so that it's going to fit right where I want it to. I'm going to end up cutting this hole. Normally I'd use a drill and a jigsaw, but what I'd use here is a, uh, a Bosch oscillating tool. This is great for this because I didn't know what could possibly be in the wall. I didn't think there were any cables, but you never know. So anyway, I'm using a fine uh, blade on this and it's uh, burning a little bit. You can see some of the smoke and dust, but it does a great job. And of course, you'll notice right in the middle of it, there's a stud. Good thing is this is not a load bearing wall so the stud really doesn't have a whole lot of purpose so uh, because of that I'm not going to worry about it at all just cutting it out. So I marked it on the inside as well and using a little bit rougher blade on the oscillating tool I go in and start cutting everything out. Before you knew it I had cut through and the panel popped right out. You can see some of the plastic I put in there previously before I had this uh, plywood on the inside up. And um, anyway, with all that gone, I now removed the stud, get it out of the way, but I had to trim it up a little bit that you'll see right here. And uh, once I clean that up, I bring it, the network box back in and it just slides right in. So at this point, it's ready to be secured. I secured it with four screws on the front side, although I didn't get that footage. And now I'm taking the punch panel, using that five gallon bucket of paint to hold it up and... I am uh, basically starting on punching all those down. Now I'm not going to show you much of this, I show a couple of them being put in place, um, but this takes about an hour to get through all the cables and after an hour or so I eventually get through with this and then I uh, move on to taking that and putting it back into the uh, network uh, panel. It ends up having about a three or four service loop which will be great for future uh, work on it. And uh, that's about it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this time-lapse video. If you'd like to check out part one and part two of the series, click right here. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do so by clicking the subscribe button today. Thank you for watching.